Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Rory McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. Pope Francis published a rescript related to his motu proprio traditionis custodis and clarified that bishops must obtain authorization from the Holy See before granting permission for parish churches to be used for Eucharistic celebrations according to the preconciliar rite and before allowing priests ordained after July the 16th in 2021 to use the 1962 Roman Missal. This follows a meeting on Monday with Cardinal Arthur Roach, head of the Dicastery for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments. Traditionis Custodes severely restricted the celebration of the traditional Latin Mass by priests around the world, except in a few congregations that have been allowed to use the 1962 Missal. Nicaragua's Sandinista government has stripped 94 people of their citizenship, including Bishop Silvo José Baez of Managua and Father Uriel Vallejos, a Catholic priest from Matagalpa, the diocese of Bishop Rolando Álvarez, who has been given a 26-year jail sentence. Appeals Court Judge Ernesto Rodríguez charged the 94 with distributing false information, conspiring against the government and violating sovereignty laws. Although Catholic organisations in the United States moved fast to welcome Nicaraguan political exiles, Archbishop Timothy Broglio, the head of the US Conference of Catholic Bishops, warned on Tuesday that more needs to be done to address the Latin American country's violations of human rights. The Archbishop said the Nicaraguan regime and its allies have been implementing a policy of severe aggression against the Catholic Church. Meanwhile, the bishops of Cuba have called on the faithful to raise prayers on Ash Wednesday for the persecuted church in Nicaragua. Russian President Vladimir Putin announced on Tuesday that he was suspending Russia's participation in the new START treaty with the United States. That is the last nuclear armaments reduction agreement between the countries. It was drafted in 2010 and in 2021 it was renewed for another five years. There is a limit of 1,550 long-range nuclear warheads for each side. According to Mr Putin, Russia had to suspend the deal because the United States and its allies wanted Moscow to suffer a strategic loss and interfere with its nuclear facilities in the wake of the Ukraine war. Jens Stoltenberg, the Secretary General of the NATO Military Alliance, reacted negatively and said that more nuclear weapons and fewer arms controls make the world more dangerous. Mr Putin blamed the West for the war by allegedly supporting tanks in eastern Ukraine where many Russians live. Earlier in Ukraine's capital Kyiv, President Joe Biden accused Russia of invading a sovereign nation to start the biggest armed confrontation in Europe since the Second World War. Almost one year after the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Major Archbishop Sviatoslav Shevchuk of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church said that US President Joe Biden's unexpected visit on Monday has given the people of the nation fresh hope. He said that the Russian army has sentenced them to death, but that the numerous visits by heads of state to Kyiv over the past year, including Mr Biden's, have given them hope. Meanwhile, in a letter at the start of Lent, the Ukrainian Roman Catholic bishops urged stringent fasting for peace. On Tuesday, Human Rights Watch accused Russia of committing a war crime when it fired missiles at a train station in eastern Ukraine killing some 60 civilians who were trying to evacuate. The strike on the Kramatorsk train station in April ranks among the worst attacks on civilian targets since the start of the war. The US state of Arkansas is leading the way in new dynamic education reforms which are rooted in values. This comes at a time when many American children are no longer learning the fundamentals of reading, writing and arithmetic because of the new curriculum intended to indoctrinate students and years of administrative mismanagement in the education department. Earlier this month, Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders proposed a major overhaul of the state's education system. The new LEARNS bill tackles issues from teacher wage increases to the rights of parents to choose the appropriate school for their children. Once implemented, the reforms will also eliminate any sexual, gender ideology or left-leaning content in the school curriculum. Governor Sanders has promised to empower students how to think, not what to think. The Abrahamic family house dedicated to Judaism, Christianity and Islam in the United Arab Emirates now has a Catholic church. In the newly opened St Francis of Assisi church in the complex located in Abu Dhabi, Cardinal Michael Fitzgerald, who is the former president of the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, was present. Cardinal Fitzgerald said, The place of prayer should also be a place of joy. Bishop Paolo Martinelli, the apostolic vicar of Southern Arabia, reflected on the meaning of the document human fraternity for world peace and living together during the service. He characterised the church as a gift of the government to Pope Francis 
and he described its namesake, St Francis of Assisi, as the saint of universal brotherhood, peace and reconciliation. The Abrahamic house also contains a synagogue and a mosque. In the United States, 28 groups have written a letter to the Biden administration urging the abandonment of proposals that would let biological men take part in women's sports and share locker facilities. The administration had proposed regulations to define gender identity as a form of sex discrimination under the Title IX of the Education Amendments of 1972. In spring, the department will publish further regulations that clarify how Title IX applies to transgendered athletes competing in women's sports. In a letter sent to Secretary of Education Miguel Cardona by the Defence of Freedom Institute for Policy Studies, a diverse coalition of lawyers, experts, parents, civil rights groups and former education officials, the administration was warned that the additional anticipated regulations will unfairly penalise female athletes. The Archdiocese of Turin in the north of Italy is releasing videos and podcasts based on one of Christendom's most treasured relics, the Shroud of Turin, which is claimed to have been wrapped around the body of Christ for his burial. Archbishop Roberto Repoli of Turin said this is part of a project to experience faith, science and devotion linked to the Shroud. The episodes can be watched on various platforms and the website of the Archdiocese. The 53 square foot rectangular linen and cloth is revered by millions of Christians as the genuine burial cloth of Jesus Christ. It has been venerated in Turin Cathedral for centuries. Cardinal Peter Iberi Okpaleke implored Nigerians to seek both the Kingdom of God and the political kingdom ahead of the general elections in the country on February the 25th. In his Lenten message, the prelate said it was a do or die situation as the nation was on the brink. He underscored the need for the electorate in the Western African country to decide wisely as they cast their votes and highlighted qualities that need to be considered. Vision, competence, character, credibility and track record were among his criteria. The Cardinal warned that a wrong decision would spell doom for citizens. A Catholic liberal arts university in Northern Virginia is getting ready to eliminate 10 conventional majors and programs due to a lack of opportunity for expansion. The subjects include theology, religious studies and economics. The move by Marymount University shocked the school and received strong criticism from both students and alumni. President of the student government, Ashley Trejo Mejia, wrote in a letter that cutting elements of the School of Humanities, as well as math and art programmes, would be damaging to the variety of the student community. The student leader said that eliminating programmes would change the principles and the character the university was founded on. US Attorney General Merrick Garland and FBI Director Christopher Wray were the recipients of a seven-page letter of concern from the Attorney Generals of several US states. Missouri Attorney General Andrew Bailey and 19 other Attorney Generals joined Catholic bishops protesting religious profiling in a leaked Federal Bureau of Investigation memo. In the letter, they condemned the FBI's now withdrawn internal memo that identified traditionalist Catholics as potential racially or ethnically motivated extremists. The memo said that among those beliefs which distinguish some from others was a preference for the traditional Latin Mass, pre-Vatican II teachings and adherence to traditional Catholic teachings on sex and marriage. Investigative journalism group Undercover DC published the memo from January the 23rd last week. The number of civilians killed by Myanmar's military regime topped 3,000 on February the 17th. That is according to the Assistance Association for Political Prisoners, who have been keeping track of the number of killings and arrests since the army seized power on the 1st of February in 2021. A religious sister named Sate was killed in Sagaing central region, and she is the most recent victim that the outfit has been able to identify. According to the investigation, the army and Pew Sohati, a militia association with the regime, killed at least 1,229 people in Sagaing region alone, accounting for 41% of all casualties. The United Nations estimates that at least 39,000 homes have been set on fire in the last two years. Ever since the military seized power, government troops have intensified their counter-defensive against separatist fighters in several states. Finally, the Marathon Revival Service in Kentucky's Asbury University will come to an end on Thursday after two weeks of non-stop prayer and worship involving students. Since the 8th of February, the institution has been holding the uninterrupted service on its campus. Campus President Kevin Brown has issued new guidelines, stating that public worship will henceforth take place in other churches in central Kentucky. Up until Thursday, which is the National Collegiate Day of Prayer, the campus will offer services in the evening for college and high school students, 
Mr Brown cited the lack of facilities to accommodate the visitors that come to Wilmore as the reason for the decision to wind up the service, which went viral on social media. And those are your latest headlines. Do join us again tomorrow for more. And do remember, you can always visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.